Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, Jalen Tyson no longer a Red Raider, or is he? And we also get to Grant McCaslin's moving targets next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Everything runs through Lubbock. Great to see you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network. Always appreciate being your first listen every day on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more and visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. He's the only Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan. And kicking off the week, Chris, with more dominoes falling, Within Texas Tech men's basketball, if you're a Tech Hoops fan, probably know by now, saw it over the weekend, that Jalen Tyson has decided to enter the transfer portal. Subsequent to conversations with Coach McCaslin, obviously, and some of the new staff that is on the ground. And we'll get to some financial details uh, as it relates to that new staff before we're out of here today, Chris, that may give us some more tea leaves to read, uh, so to speak. But uh Wasn't quite sure what to read into the tea leaves with Jalen Tyson over the last few weeks. Obviously still fairly young in his college basketball career, had a lot of potential, and came on to be a fairly consistently impactful scorer for Texas Tech last season. He was on my short list of Red Raiders I wanted to see back in the mix, Chris, though he wasn't at the top, so I'm a little bit conflicted in how I'm processing uh, Jalen Tyson's departure i guess is what i would call it right now yeah and i and i'll i'll be honest as you and i sit here and talk I, i'm not sure where things stand with with jalen tyson i i i'm gonna go off of what i know i've because here's what i've seen I, i've seen that he has entered I, i've seen that he w- will enter and 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 i don't know if either is true i know that uh, uh, i've even seen that a texas tech folks or whoever that is anonymous or otherwise have said yeah we, we don't know if he's not in the portal yet or whatever so but he, here's what i can tell you and, <laughs> has and, anybody and, asked the colorado athletics director yet <laughs> <laughs> rick george there is absolutely zero truth zero. to this tweet that's right um yeah they did have a meeting over the weekend or, or i guess on friday too um <laughs> Uh, up, up there in uh, up there in Boulder, uh, I I just know that this is again. I think that people like wanted to skip to the end of the last week or so with a lot of these kids, assuming yeah. that we hadn't heard, you know, from them or about them. So they're they're going to be back, and I, I the, the fact that there is a question about what Jalen Tyson's future holds doesn't surprise me one bit. I think. I think I would suggest the same about Lamar Washington. I still think you're trying to figure out about uh, Daniel Bacho, okay? And then, you know, you still got Curran Walton and Demorion Williams who are still here, hadn't heard a word uh, about them or from them or anything like that. So, I, you know, uh, but – and I, maybe I'm missing somebody. Kyra Lindsay, uh, I guess, would be another one. But as far as Tyson goes, you know, I, I, I don't – if if he were to enter the portal, okay, because and so let me skip backwards or go backwards here. All I can go off of is I know that he had reached out or his people had reached out to certain people yesterday, indicating likely to leave or people that had talked to Jalen. It sounds like he he might leave. That that was kind of the indication. I don't think it's it's he is leaving. I don't think he's out. He's got his new destination picked out. There, there's some gray area there for sure so i want to be careful about the words that i choose and how it, it's being discussed because i don't think he's as you and i sit here and talk actually in the portal yet but it, yeah. it sure sounded like that's the way it was headed but it's also not going to surprise me if there's a pivot here and he stays here and is part of coach mccaslin's program so um you know I, I'll, I'll stop you know him and hawing around i guess and, and let you kind of no, please. Let's him. Let's haw. <laughs> because there's so much vagary here. I, I don't know what else you could do, but him and haw and wonder about uh, what the reality might look like. I mean, it's going to be based in some speculation, clearly some informed, maybe some just wild guesses. 
Um, but it has been kind of a an interesting thing to observe with with Jalen Chris. Absolutely. A couple of weeks ago, you and I were just talking about uh, a level thirteen graphic, the NIL marketing agency that worked closely with Texas Tech basketball and some of these players. Um, a graphic that basically was outlining just an agreement with level thirteen. I said at that time, level 13 is not exclusive to Texas Tech, so I'm not telling you to take it to mean that it means, hey, I'm back as a Red Raider, but we kind of wondered, all right, well, what what does this signify, if it signifies anything uh, in proximity to Texas Tech basketball? Maybe it did, maybe it didn't, but the timing of this, Chris, for me, is much like, I guess, the Bacho timing, and this is just my wild guess speculation time, um, where... Whereas you had guys like Jennings or Fisher, you know, get into the portal, get there early. Um, You're kind of waiting around in the portal for Texas Tech resolution. And then since then, we've seen Robert Jennings say, I'm going to remain as a Red Raider. Whenever you have the the coaching staff land, you have the head coach, and then you have some of the staff assembled, I should say, obviously not entirely, but some conversations are happening, obviously. And then on the other side of that, you have like, uh, Daniel Bacho entered the transfer portal. Now you have Jalen Tyson, I guess, with some intention to enter the transfer portal. The timing of that signifies, at least to me, something maybe a little bit different than the the prior to McCaslin portal entries. Because I would think, how, how do you have conversations with new leadership, enter the portal, and that be some indication that you're staying <laughs> with the new leadership? Maybe I'm reading... I'm like covered in tea leaves right now. I'm just reading too many tea leaves. Does that make sense though? Because it, it kind of would be odd, I guess, to have some conversations with the guy that's leading the thing and then be like, all right, now I'm going to go announce something publicly uh, as far as portal entry, but I could be back. I It's so tough to know when you're not obviously in those rooms, but some of those timeline points, uh, to me, would kind of suggest, yeah, it's a different kind of decision as opposed to getting in there prior to the coach being announced. I, I think you're. Uh, I think you're probably right. By the way, are you a sweet tea guy or unsweet tea guy? I'm a sweet tea guy. I had somebody tell me over the weekend they like half unsweet, half sweet. I said, no, you just like sweet tea. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> You tell the waiter I want water and half ice water, and they put ice in it. And you think this is nice? It's only half. No, you like ice water. Man, I, okay, I, that's I, just a family I, argument. I, I, I'm sorry to derail the conversation. I, I've, <laughs> I've seen I've seen some of that uh, sweet tea be made at at some of these uh, local establishments, sure. and it it boggles the mind how many bags of sugar they dump in there. It makes me feel uh, <laughs> makes me feel a certain way. So I, I try to roll with the unsweet uh, on occasion, maybe a little <laughs> splash of lemonade or something. But um, yeah, speaking of tea leaves, I, yeah. I, I think you're probably right. Uh, Cowan and in, uh, in looking into the timing of or or wondering about the timing if, if there is in fact a portal entry here uh, I, I would I would find it hard to believe that he, he would return I think at this point you've had a couple of weeks around each other you've been able to uh, you would think uh, discuss scheme and usage and style of play and and whatever else and and maybe you know because in, in some ways people are gonna uh, jump to conclusions one way or the other it depends on if you really like player really like coach really like program don't like player whatever you're gonna try to side with if if there's a, a um a divorce here, I guess to you know to to use a term. I it, it may not it may not be a negative at all. It could be like, man, I just don't know if you fit with what we want to do, Jalen or Coach. I just don't know if I fit with what you guys want to do. And so, you know, I mean, and and this is a an avenue that's been made available to these guys. They're allowed to go, you know, seek out employment elsewhere i guess if you if you if you want to look at it that way um i know that uh, i guess certain people don't want to use the word employee as it relates to student we're athletes, in the but... real world here on lock on <laughs> yeah. texas tech correct? yeah yeah but uh <laughs> but but it but it may not be you know just 
I, I, you just don't know the context of it. And but but I think you're probably right in that the timing is such that look, it, it's you, you've you've probably had time to sort through a lot of things and. You know, wh- whoever's opinion it is, maybe it's mutual. Maybe it's just like, hey, we don't want you here or, hey, I don't want to be here. Who knows? It doesn't really matter uh, if if there's uh, somebody that wants to leave, uh, then then they get to do that. Um, and he would have to, I think, go through the waiver process uh, to be eligible immediately. But again, I want to stress, as you and I sit here and talk, I don't believe he's in the portal yet. I was just indicated to likely to leave or sounds like he might be leaving. So I want to make sure I phrase that correctly again. And, um, but maybe this was kind of a warning shot. Who the heck knows uh, what, what, what we're dealing with here. I, I just have no way of knowing. It was just reported kind of odd uh, the, the way it was, um, you know, again, ha- has plans on entering or whatever. I mean, that's, that's very different than has entered. So we'll see. Uh, what we end up getting, I guess. Yeah, the initial uh, report uh, via a tweet was from uh, Tobias Bass, whose uh, Twitter bio says he's a live news editor for The Athletic. Um, so make of it whatever you want to. But that that's the indication so far. But uh, as we sit here having this conversation on Monday morning, actual technical portal entry, uh, yeah, maybe a different thing. But I want to pivot a little bit, Chris, uh, maybe away from Tyson or away from some of those that we've seen already in a Red Raider uniform. What what are you hearing? What is the beat on the street as it relates to outside pursuits? Because I know you've touched on some, uh, I don't know if we've got any names really specifically, but we've touched on some directions to look, Nevada otherwise, uh, as it relates to maybe some pursuits for Coach McCaslin in the portal himself. But I wonder... Like, what's the picture actually uh, when it comes to the scales and and the balance of the frenzy outside the program and pursuit of guys like that versus maybe a frenzy to pursue guys inside your program that I'm not so sure is even there. I, I've said this for a little while now. I'm preparing myself for less as opposed to more when it comes to like returners and things like that. And I don't begrudge a new coach for wanting to get, you know, something close to a fresh start if that's what he wants. But what are you feeling? What are you hearing? What's your perspective on things happening with guys who haven't been in Red Raider uniforms just yet? And maybe how much attention is being devoted to that compared to uh, some of what the fans are thinking more about, at least speaking personally, and that being guys who have already been in your program. What's the breakdown feel like to you right now? But first, today's episode brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book, NBA postseason on your mind. Now's the perfect time to get in as a new customer with FanDuel. Download the FanDuel app today, and you're going to get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet don't bank. You feel me? Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. And then you can bet on anything and everything. Money line, point scores, how many fans LeBron gets kicked out in the first quarter, whatever you want, they got it. Plus, FanDuel is even going to let you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout. Smoking on that same game parlay pack, my man, only with FanDuel. Don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet. Up to $1,000 in bonus bets today when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on that's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more and make every moment more with fanduel an official sports betting partner of the nba what are you feeling what are you hearing what's your perspective on things happening with guys who haven't been in red raider uniforms just yet and maybe how much attention is being devoted to that compared to uh some of what the fans are thinking more about at least speaking personally and that being guys who have already been in your program what's the breakdown feel like to you right now I, I think uh, I think when all's said and done, you're going to end up uh, with you know uh, ha- half of a new team, maybe slightly over half of a new team. I still think there's some some gray area there trying to figure out. Of of again, we just talked about some of those guys a while ago. Uh, you know, Lamar Washington, I guess, is next on my list of kind of curiosity about what if if we get any kind of uh, word out of out of him one way or the other I guess if it stays quiet I think he, he's obviously gonna stay here but I just would uh, I, I would not assume too much there and then with Jalen Tyson I guess we're sitting here wondering now as, as well but um, but you know and as far as 
you know, I, I think that they've, I haven't counted this and you, and you, you, you don't know what's real, what isn't, but I think they've uh, reached out to somewhere close to 30 to 40 kids, you know, in the portal. <laughs> and I still didn't get a call. All right. That sounds like a big list and I'm still not on it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if I should be amazed at that number. Probably not, but that still just seems it's like gigantic. Yeah. And, and, and again, I think part of it too is that this is such a moving target because if you get one of your kids that says, okay, I'm going to come back, I'm good to go. That may, that may eliminate a, you know, a bunch of guys on, on the list that you've reached out to and like, okay, we don't True. need somebody like that. You know? So yeah. Uh, I just don't know, I, I, cause I think trying to figure out how many spots you have to fill and exactly what positions you have to fill is a bit of a moving target. Here's the, here's the one thing that I think that we can know for certain though, as far as portal, you, you, you need some size, um, you know, unless you get good news on Bacho and that he is going to return, um, mm-hmm. I, without a doubt, you 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 need some length. You need some size uh, that that can help out Robert Jennings because right now that's the only guy you've got uh, that you you can for sure count on. I think Kyron Lindsay, Kyron Lindsay, excuse me, he's more of a a wing or an undersized big uh, that that that's an athlete, but he plays more on the on the wing than he does in the post. And you know you need some rim protection, you need some rebounding, all those things. And I think that you've got a Grand Canyon and a Nevada. I said that correctly, uh, transfer visiting potentially early this week, uh, maybe simultaneously, maybe separate, I think, uh, and th- they're, they're, they're younger players, I think guard types. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll see, but th- this is, I mean, every day you wake up, it's, it's Texas tech is, is amongst schools that have reached out to this particular player. I mean, it, and from all over. Montana State, Syracuse, uh, you know the the Grand Canyons, the Nevada. I mean, it's just it's just it, the scope is massive right now, um, and I don't know exactly what you're looking to add because I don't know how many pieces you 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 need to add to, which I don't know if they do either, uh, as you're trying to sort through still your current roster. Man, that is the the moving target aspect of this. Oh, it's maddening. <laughs> That, that really sounds like a challenge and sounds like a great reason for a head coach to say, here is the line. Call me Bill B. Travis because I'm drawing, drawing a line with the sword. This is it, guys, in or out. And by the way, with a team that did what they did last year, just speaking as a fan, why would I be up in arms over just about anyone uh, on the list waffling, wavering here or there? I, especially if I'm the new head coach. Oh, okay. Great to meet you. You're a part of that 500 year that got the other coach fired. Okay. Well, I'm definitely going to spend a lot of time, you know, hoping that you're going to make a great decision to be back here. I know there's some guys that you want because they're good basketball players. One of those we talked about on Friday and pop Isaacs. Great to have him as a red Raider again. Uh, but I also think Chris, that at some point, it would certainly behoove you just to say, dude, we've, we've got to, I can't have moving targets forever. I, I got to assemble a roster. Either yeah. you're a guy I'd like to keep, or you're a guy that I don't care to keep. Those are the only two options. And here's how I feel about you. How do you feel about us? Vamos. Now we move on. So I, I'm sure that that that's not as black and white as I would like for it to be, or maybe as everyone involved would even like for it to be, because you got to manage personal relationships. Um, but Chris, at the same time, you got to get on to tending to other business. And I'm not so sure. Maybe I'm just very jaded uh, because of the disappointment of the previous season. But I don't know like what guy is out there or was out there that you'd just be saying, man, I'm always, I'm reserving a spot for him until the very damn end. Like I, I was that an Isaacs or something? I don't even know if there was a guy that fit that kind of category. Like, all right, well, you can be a moving target as long as you want, because I, I, you know, crawl to hell and back twice on Sunday to have you on my basketball team. I don't know if anybody even really fit that bill, but if there is anyone that is contributing to the moving target madness as a student athlete, uh, let's move on. Let's move on. And I don't <sighs> think anybody's like being malicious. 
you know, it's not like they're trying to be an obstacle to progress, but it's just like anybody else you're trying to manage. Go back to that word employee. <laughs> At some point, we got to make a decision, guys, and, and we got to get with it. So maybe these things are a little bit more cut and dry uh, because obviously those having the conversations, I know a hell of a lot more than those who are speculating on such things. But uh, man, the heights of frustration. We'll, we'll use that word one more time within this basketball calendar. <laughs> the heights of frustration if you're thinking about moving targets. That's a great way to break that down. I appreciate that perspective. Before we're out of here, I want to get to something else on the basketball front. And actually, it does involve possibly a few more tea leaves, greenbacks, dollar signs. What is there to learn as it relates to some financial breakdown when it comes to those who have joined Coach McCaslin so far? Can you learn something about maybe what their spot on the staff is going to be if you know maybe what range of compensation is going to be within? I want to get to that before we're done, and that's coming up next on Locked on Texas Tech. Thanks for joining us on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network. What up to the everydayers out there? Long for the ride for the long haul. Probably subscribed on YouTube. No more test driving for you. If you're not one of those, consider joining the Locked On Texas Tech fam damnly by subscribing on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts so you never miss an episode. Talking a lot of hoops today, more so concentrating Roster-wise, for the first 20 minutes of the program, uh, wondering about the future of Jalen Tyson with or without Texas Tech. But before we're done, Chris, obviously still wondering as well about those guys who are pursuing student-athletes, coaching staff, support staff, ops guys. We broke down video coordinators last week. What do they do? You probably don't even know. But go check out an episode last week. You're going to learn from the one and only Chris Level. Uh, But Chris... Kind of curious what you're seeing so far with some of these names that maybe we have talked about before. A couple of guys coming with Coach McCaslin from North Texas. I think we got a, a strength and conditioning coach uh, now on board as well. Is there anything to learn uh, from financial figures that are emerging as to maybe what what spots these guys will occupy, or what are you seeing so far as kind of rounding out the staff picture? Yeah, when when. Uh... Coaches are hired. I think it's it's pretty common for media to reach out to Texas Tech or or other public institutions and say, "Hey, when, whenever we're allowed to see it, we, we'd love to see the agreement." And and that's just that's public record uh, is part of a publicly funded institution. And so that comes out uh, over the weekend when Texas Tech finally kind of uh, an- announces or, or releases that info to, to certain media that uh, Matt Brower was going to make 385000 uh, a season and that Coach, uh, Coach AC, uh, which is what Grant calls, uh, calls uh, Chokey, I think is, is uh, the, the other nickname, but he's making two fifty. These are the guys that came from North Texas. Uh, I think it tells me, based on those salaries, those guys are going to be assistant coaches. So I think you can stop kind of wondering about, you know, staff members and assistant coaches and this and that, as you, as a lot of people have kind of wondered and speculated. I, I think those two very much in line with what an assistant coach uh, makes. And you know, obviously there's still another spot, uh, I think, you're going to keep hearing about Ben McCollum until you don't. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll frame Ben McCollum in the same way that I've framed Grant McCaslin in the coaching search. Hey, until he says no, until he signs an extension where he's at or he takes another job or whatever, I, you, you're going to keep hearing that name. And I knew that there was a, he was in the mix at Buffalo. He was trying to get in the mix maybe at Montana State was, was the word in coaching circles. Uh, don't know where where the Montana State uh, situation stands, but I know that uh, Buffalo has done something different. So, but that that again, I think that can kind of uh, end some speculation. Again, I don't know titles. I don't know exactly the way this will all look. There, as you said, Cal, and there's a million pieces left to add. Not a million, but it feels like it to the staff. And you can kind of move the chess pieces around uh, it, like you want, depending on kind of what you feel like you need or what you're able to add and all those things. But 
uh, at this point, I would tell you, based on those salaries, those guys are going to be assistant coaches for Coach McCaslin. And I'm sorry I don't have the name off the top of my head, but uh, Coach McCaslin's North Texas strength and conditioning coach is coming with, correct? Yeah, Coach Wright, I believe is, yes, but... yes, correct. Yeah, okay. he, is, he is here. Um, I think that is uh, – that's he's been on – I want to say he's been on campus for over a week or two now, uh, I believe. So um, is uh, is anybody still mentioning the name Barrett Perry other than my buddies uh, at the bar? I think there's people that are hopeful. Um, I think that I said other know, than my they, buddies at the bar, Chris. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, uh, yeah. Yes, there is. You know, I, I I would say though that if I'm ranking it right now, I would say McCollum is most likely. Gotcha. Uh, but again, and, until until I hear differently, until you hear differently, but we, I just don't, I don't know. And there and there's going to be some folks that you 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 know we're not aware of uh, that are are likely to um, join this staff in in some capacity too. But uh, you know the, that'll that'll play out. You know, however fast Coach McCousin wants yeah. it to pay, uh, play out. Well, I thought you'd be the perfect guy to ask since uh, you're in uh, this chair making all these decisions. What the hell's taking so long? <laughs> but I wasn't going to ask you that because then I thought, well, maybe that'd be unfair to ask a question like that. <laughs> but uh, like the McCollum thing, yeah, we're talking about it, we're talking about it, we're talking about it, we're talking about it. Now we've got some time in the rear view with McCaslin as the head coach. I just, not that you would have this answer, but I, I do wonder what, what is taking so long uh, with him or anyone else, but specifically him, Chris, because it feels like to me, like if that was a match uh, set to be, I expected something a little quicker. And that may have been stupid of me. If you're having to pursue someone beyond like who you thought your first choice was, maybe let's say hypothetically that was McCollum, then I could understand, all right, well, it's going to play out a little longer because you're having to consider, you know, plan B's or C's or or whatever, but uh, has there been any timeline that uh, timeline? I'm sorry that ran contrary to your expectation. Are you spending any time wondering about what's taking so long, or was this kind of what you were prepared for? That's a great question um, because I, I I am just going to say that I've not seen you know, uh, a timeline like this, because this whole thing has moved kind of slow. Think about it. Yeah. The hiring. And now, now once, once coach McCaslin was announced, I mean, it really, no, nothing has happened quickly since. And, um, I, I, I just, j just because I haven't seen it before, doesn't mean it, it one, no, I was not expecting this. And, and just because I haven't seen one move this slow, uh, I think this is just kind of the pace that Coach McCaslin kind of operates at. And I'll, I will tell you, people are going to have lots of opinions about being impatient or, hey, man, be patient. It's it's okay. I mean, there's going to be different sides right. of this deal. Ultimately, ultimately, it's all about what you do in November and December and January yeah. and the results on the scoreboard. Nobody's going to remember – this they're only going to remember those results so you you take as long as you need to sort through whatever you need to to have multiple conversations with with whoever you want to whether it's it's current roster whether it's potential staff member whatever get the money right uh get get the get the situation set up correctly how you want it get that office set up how you want it because Ultimately, you're the one that's going to be judged, and it's going to be you know everybody's going to get to see the the scores, and that's ultimately all that matters. How we get to that point is is what we're talking about here, and there's many, many more weeks and days and months and all that of kind of uh, twists and turns to figure out who's coaching here, who's playing here, and all those kinds of things. But I, I was not expecting it to be kind of this this I don't want to say slow. Uh, but because in in the two sports that I deal with the most, football and basketball, there has been a heightened sense of urgency in, in hiring and in portal activity and all those things because of the early signing dates and because the portals and now even more so because you've got these windows that yeah. uh, that that kind of you know you, you've got to conduct business quickly uh, or or you're so. Again, if it was me, I would uh, 
I, I would have as many, you know, eyeballs and, and just people helping me try to recruit and, and dot I's cross T's, all those kinds of things with, with potential visits coming in and all that. But it's not me, you know, it's, it's not my job. It's, it's yeah. somebody else's job. And I don't pretend to know kind of, I'm sure he's got plenty of reasons and there's probably plenty that we don't know too. And that's okay. You know, but sure. Um, but no, I, I wasn't expecting it to, to kind of be, I guess this quiet or this slow. I guess anytime I'm getting impatient with it, I, I do have to remind myself, well, I don't know the real reason why it would have to move <laughs> right. at a faster speed. Yeah. Um, I think most of us, particularly on the coaching front, that, that's probably where the root of it is for me as a fan. You just feel like until you have all these coaches announced, can you fully pursue yeah. uh, players or give them as good of a sales pitch as you possibly could when you do have it announced? So if you just had the coaches announced, <clears throat> then followed that with a slow trickle as far as roster, I think that would be a little bit easier uh, to digest, right or wrong, but there's some feeling in you don't even have you don't have your sales team assembled fully. So how are you going to go sell to your fullest ability? This is also I kind of just feel like as I'm saying it out loud, very much outside looking in fan kind of drinking buddy conversation. <laughs> and that's what probably I'm the best at. So I guess I'll just stay in that realm. But when you actually do think about, well, why do I need it to be there so quick? I don't know if you're going to really come up with a good answer other than just pure entertainment. And yeah, a lot of people might not remember some of the hemming and hawing of the Texas Tech men's basketball program. This has been a pretty good episode. I think they're going to remember this him and haw we call this episode of Locked On at Texas Tech for the ages. I mean, it'll be taught in podcast history classes uh, right after the Adam Curry chapter, I think probably chapter number two in decades down the road. Chris, it was that good and that enjoyable for me, my man, I think I may go about out back, smoke a cigarette. It was so much fun. Chris, thanks for the time and the perspectives as always. Yes. Namaste. Yes. And just seize the day, people. Uh, keep hope alive and we'll him and haul another time. That's right. Right back here on the other side. And if you're an everyday or we expect to see you there, thanks for being out there on the regular. Subscribe on YouTube so you miss nothing. If you haven't subscribed so far, you can also do that anywhere you get podcast and we're back on the other side with another round of locked on texas tech for chris i'm casey thank you again for joining us for this edition of locked on texas tech